So uh, today I have decided to talk uh, about uh, SLD, uh, which is the most uh, common uh, seen uh, rheumato uh, rheumatic diseases uh, uh, encountered during a pregnancy. So um, the discussion will be uh, around these three areas, uh, pre-pregnancy, pregnancy and postpartum. So what do we need to know uh, during, uh, before the pregnancy uh, will be the fertility, can they uh, get pregnant? How to prepare an SLE lady for pregnancy, and once uh, they got pregnant, what will happen? Actually, uh, how uh, the SLE will affect the pregnancy, and uh, the other way around, how the pregnancy will affect the SLE and also the fetus, the treatment uh, related uh, uh, issue, how to monitor them uh, during pregnancy, because I think uh, everyone is actually uh, very frightened to see SLE patient, I suppose. Uh, because uh, everything will relate them to SLE and then refer back to me. So and, then, and also um, I will discuss uh, about the special consideration uh, mainly uh, on the positive uh, anti antilla and also uh, positive uh, anti positive an antibody and uh, drugs uh, that are compatible uh, during pregnancy and of course uh, postpartum uh, the challenges uh, uh, what are the risks of uh, flare, uh, breastfeeding and also uh, family planning. So I will discuss this uh, by uh, showing you a case. So I have a, a real patient, uh, 29 years old, a Malay lady, uh, who was uh, diagnosed to have an SLE three years ago. She initially she came with a mala rash, uh, alopecia, uh, autoimmune uh, hemolytic anemia, uh, joint synovitis, positive ANA, double stranded DNA, and also a positive anti uh, antibodies. Her initial anti-phospholipid syndrome, uh, uh, the, all the antibodies, uh, including the lupus anticoagulant, anti-cardiolipin, uh, antibody, anti beta glycoprotein 1, were all negative. Her disease uh, is quite stable for the past one year. So, uh, one of the um, uh, follow-up, hmm, we noticed that uh, she has actually no uh, signs and symptoms suggestive of any active disease. Hmm. Examination uh, were all uh, are remarkable, mm -hmm. and including her uh, biochem, the cell counts are all normal, renal normal, albumin normal, liver also normal, urine protein negative for blood and uh, uh, for protein. So basically, she is stable. Uh, the disease is in a uh, reason. So now, uh, uh, the, this, this is the list of the medication she's on. She's still on the low dose of uh, two point five. Hydroxychloroquine. Azadabi was added two years ago for the recurrent uh, eye harm, and she she is on a uh, calcium and also vitamin D because of the long term steroid. So now she came, and she just tell us that she just got married, so uh, she's planning to start a family. So what do you think? So now the question is, can the SLE lady get pregnant? Yes. Okay. So, and if they can get pregnant, what will be the pre-pregnancy evaluation or counseling, which I'm going to tell you later. So first of all, uh, uh, just a bit on the fertility in SLE. Uh, so what do you think about the fertility in SLE? Do you think uh, the uh, fertility will be lower than the normal population? In fact, it's no. So SLE is not known to directly uh, affect the fertility. And, and even during the active severe disease, uh, you see them uh, uh, get pregnant. This is the most, most uh, heavy and uh, 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 dangerous uh, 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 time for us and also for the OMG team as well. Yeah. But bear in mind that the fertility is reduced mainly because of the treatment of SLE. Mainly, yeah, if the steroid dose is high mm, to cause an irregular menses, or those uh, who have received a uh, cyclophosphamide, mainly the high cumulative dose, more than uh, eight nine grams, and at the age of uh, L elder age, mm, uh, in fact uh, near near to thirties, uh, which can cause a uh, ovarian failure. Yeah. So, uh, what are the evaluation we should uh, uh, do before they get pregnant? So, first of all, uh, what we are going to do is we need to go through uh, whether they have any contraindication for pregnancy or not. 
if they have a severe pulmonary hypertension, where the echo shows the um, pulmonary artery systemic pressure more than 15 millimeter mercury, or sometimes they can have an interstitial lung disease in SLE, where they have a severe restrictive lung disease, where the FVC of uh, false vital capacity less than one liter. At once, renal insufficiency, creatinine uh, more than 2.8, which uh, will be almost more than 200 uh, micro uh, mole per liter in our uh, normal units. At once, heart failure and right class 3, 4, or previous severe preeclampsia or heart syndrome despite treatment. If they have do have uh, all this, you have to actually uh, advise them not uh, to go for pregnancy. If they don't have then we will assess the disease activity uh, by uh, asking the history, mm, the examination, and also uh, biochemistry and urine as well. If the disease is stable, we can proceed. If it's active, then we defer the pregnancy. And uh, uh, next, if we allow them to get pregnant, then we need to look back at the uh, auto antibodies profile, maybe the anti rho anti lab and also anti phosphoric antibodies, which I am going to uh, elaborate more later. And lastly, uh, if we are planning uh, them for pregnancy, uh, please make sure that uh, we need to uh, optimize the medication and make sure all the medications are safe uh, during uh, pregnancy. Okay, so, so in general, we should try to make sure the disease is under control, is not active at least six months prior to conception. If they have any flare, then we might uh, need to defer the uh, uh, pregnancy. And all, uh, all, all local uh, patients uh, should be given a pre-pregnancy counseling. Mm, we should tell them pregnancy mm, in SLE is considered high risk uh, no matter uh, what uh, are the disease activity and they tend to have a higher risk of a maternal and also fetal complication. Risk of a neonatal lupus syndrome if there's a presence of an anti rho anti antibodies. And also we need to uh, uh, educate them on the importance of a, a, a disease control and also the medication. So if pregnancy, uh, if, if, if uh, there's a presence of a severe SLE flare within six months, we should defer the pregnancy or uh, there's any renal involvement, active uh, lupus nephritis, we also uh, need to defer the pregnancy and also recent shock between six months because pregnancy itself is a pro-traumatic state. So come back to the case, after three months, the patient uh, came back again to see us. So she missed a period for six weeks and will be set positive. And of course, we congratulate her, <laughs> she's pregnant now. So now, the question arises again. So, what happens when the SLE uh, patient uh, uh, gets pregnant? And uh, uh, is, is pregnancy going to affect the disease activity? Uh, whether the disease will be flare or uh, quiet or remain the same? And what are the possible uh, maternal fetal complications? And also uh, uh, the spe uh, special consideration as well as I mentioned just now, anti rho and, uh, and also anti positive uh, anti body positive. Okay. Is there any uh, additional risk uh, for the pregnancy? And how do we monitor them during pregnancy? And lastly, uh, what are the medications uh, compatible uh, uh, in the pregnancy? So. I am sure uh, all of you know better than me uh, uh, the physiological, the hormonal changes during pregnancy. But please uh, uh, allow me to explain the immunology changes during pregnancy in one slide. So as you know, uh, we have a T cell and we have mainly four subtypes, mainly the uh, T helper 1, T helper 2, TH17 uh, and T regulatory cell. So T, T helper 1 mainly will uh, uh, responsible in producing the interleukin 2, uh, interferon gamma, and also TNF uh, alpha, which uh, will be the uh, main uh, important uh, defense mechanism uh, in our body against the bacteria and also viral infection. And T helper 2, the TH2, uh, and uh, will subsequently uh, produce all these uh, interleukin. And Please take note that T helper 2 is actually responsible for the B cell activation for the humoral response. So in, in non-pregnancy, 
maybe our T cell will be in a, more in a TH1. So what happened uh, when the uh, SLE patient is pregnant? So we know that uh, fetus is uh, considered a foreign body. Uh, it's an uh, allograft. And because uh, uh, the body uh, uh, tends to protect the fetus and also due to the hormonal changes, the immunology changes, uh, we will, the body will automatically uh, shift the TH1 to TH2 during the pregnancy. So if you can remember TH2 again, what I mentioned is actually uh, for the B cell activation. And unfortunately, just to let you know that SLE is a B cell disease. So therefore, the risk of SLE uh, flare is higher during a pregnancy. So, uh, pregnancy will aggravate SLE disease activity mm -hmm. according to this uh, study. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a report says that uh, SLE flares occur up to uh, more than half uh, of the pregnancy. And fortunately, mm -hmm. most of the flares are mild, only involve the skin and also the joints. Uh, and these are more common uh, in those with uh, active disease at conception. Right. So, so what are the possible um, maternal complications? So maternal complications during pregnancy uh, uh, may include a preeclampsia, eclampsia, up to uh, one quarter of them. Higher risk of hypertension, health syndrome, increased risk of C-section and flares. And for fetal complication, quicker delivery, up to uh, one third of them. Fetal growth restriction. Neonatal lupus syndrome, congenital heart block, and also uh, of course the uh, fetal loss. So uh, that's about the anti rho and anti la positive. Uh, for your information, anti rho and anti la is uh, one of the subtype of uh, ENA anti nuclear antibody. If you order ENA uh, extractable nuclear antibody, uh, anti rho and anti la will be the two out of the six or seven uh, uh, ENA uh, will be tested. So and, and this this um, uh, and although antibodies mm -hmm. the, the, the particles is actually uh, very very small and can cross the placenta to give rise to a permanent uh, congenital heart block and transient neonatal lupus syndrome even in the absence of uh, clinical symptoms and for your information anti rho anti la normally we see uh, these uh, auto antibodies in uh, uh, either primary or secondary Sjogren syndrome. And the risk of uh, congenital heart block, uh, fortunately, uh, is low at two percent. But in case of a uh, 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 lupus, uh, uh, women have a previous affected child uh, with a congenital heart block. The subsequent offspring, the risk will be increased to up to ten times, uh, up to fifteen to twenty uh, percent. And congenital heart block normally occurs uh, during at the week of uh, 18 to 24 and therefore a detailed scan should be performed uh, uh, between the 16 to 20 weeks. Uh. Preferably uh, we need to order for um, echocardiogram um, of the fetus. Yeah. And, and uh, up to now um, there is no recommendation on how to treat. Even though we have picked up this is a congenital heart block due to anti rho anti la uh, positive. But up to now, we don't, don't know at all how to treat them. Suggested uh, treatment uh, will include fluorinated steroids, including uh, dexamethasone or bigromethasone, giving IV, IG, or even transplacenta uh, dexamethasone or injection of the beta adrenal, uh, adrenergic uh, drug. And surprisingly, uh, one of the uh, observations says that hydroxychloroquine may reduce the risk by 65%. So therefore, all the SLE patients, we will put them on hydroxychloroquine unless contraindicated. Hydroxychloroquine in SLE, in fact, is a lifelong treatment, not only for pregnant. So next, uh, I will talk about this uh, anti uh, phospholipid antibody. Uh, it will be, be divided into uh, three groups, uh, mainly the low risk, medium risk, and also high risk. So low risk means uh, uh, if a woman, a lupus woman have a positive, only positive uh, an antibodies without any pregnancy complication or any thrombosis. So in this group of patients, uh, we notice that uh, if the um, auto 
uh, these uh, uh, anti positive antibodies positive, they will have a lower uh, life birth rate if compared to those negative. And, and recommended treatment will be a low dose aspirin, about 75 mg to 150 mg, even though the data are limited. And for medium risk, medium risk means positive antibodies with a recurrent uh, early uh, losses or one or more uh, late uh, fetal losses. So according to um, the uh, Cochrane and also meta-analysis, prophetic doses of heparin plus aspirin will reduce the risk of pregnancy loss significantly. And maybe uh, low molecular weight heparin also uh, shows a similar effect uh, with uh, fewer side effects and also uh, easier for monitoring. For high risk, high risk, uh, again there are two groups. Mm -hmm. One of them uh, are the uh, recurrent losses despite full treatment with a heparin plus testing. And again, unfortunately in this study, we don't know uh, what to offer. Some will suggest IVIG on top of a heparin and aspirin, but but uh, these these are not actually uh, uh, show the very uh, beneficial to this group of patients. And the next group will be a uh, 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 patient with uh, previous thrombosis with a positive uh, uh, anti positive antibody, and this group of patients should be given a therapeutic anticoagulation throughout pregnancy. Okay, so how to monitor them during a pregnancy? So for, for us, uh, for rheumatology, we will normally follow up them four to six weekly. But if the disease is active, we might need to see them two weekly or even weekly. And uh, in each visit, we need to ask the his, uh, detailed history and also the examination. Looking for the signs and symptoms of them, we should ask them whether they have an increase in the alopecia with a depression of alopecia any oral ulcer, frequent uh, oral ulcer, any synovitis. Uh, synovitis means the joint pain and swelling, and also photosensitive uh, rash. And each time uh, they come for follow-up, mm, we have to check the uh, cell count, make sure there's no cytopenia, liver renal function, urine FEMB. If there's a protein, we might need to quantify them by doing the UCPI or a 24-hour urine protein. C3, C4, diamond stranded DNA, uh, we are not routinely done unless we suspect uh, they have uh, having fat due to the uh, cause of effectiveness. So this table actually uh, nicely uh, uh, show to you that um, what are the pregnancy related changes and also um, what are the uh, SLD uh, uh, flags, uh, the features. Uh, well, because uh, uh, we tend to relate everything to SLE flare, right? Uh, if the SLE patient have a headache, oh, this is due to SLE fever, oh, this is due to SLE. But if you look at this uh, table carefully, uh, pregnancy, they tend to have a facial flushing due to the hormonal changes, hormonal regime, uh, and sometimes uh, they may have some hair loss, uh, transient hair loss, uh, postpartum. But if a uh, uh, true SLE flare, they might have a photosensitive pressure, uh, typically uh, seen on the mala region, with the sparing of the nasal labial fold, and also they tend to have an oral nasal ulcer. And atraja muscular cellular wise, um, in pregnant lady, they tend to complain uh, pain here and there. Uh, but in uh, SLE, uh, you must have uh, it, uh, uh, the arthritis, which is the inflammatory in nature where you need to see uh, there's a pain and swelling of the joint. Hemato, uh, as uh, what Dr. Yu just now mentioned, mm -hmm. anemia, mild trom thrombocytopenia. But in SLE flare, uh, uh, the anemia considered uh, in SLE flare, uh, uh, we, we, we need to have a uh, hemolytic anemia instead of just a mild anemia or microcytic anemia. Thrombocytopenia normally the bill will be less than 100 and on top of that, they might have a low total white and also low uh, lymphocyte count. Renal uh, uh, urine protein normally more than 500 mg per day. And C3, C4, if we check the C3, C4, uh, in pregnant lady, normally they will have a high or normal C3, C4. But in SLE flare, the C3, C4 will be low, lower than the normal, and also a rising trend of uh, double stranded DNA levels. So what are the medications uh, compatible uh, during your pregnancy? If we look at our means, 
uh, BNF, I don't see uh, many drugs uh, fall into the category uh, FDA, uh, pregnancy category A. I think uh, what I can remember is only paracetamol in category A, but I can't use par uh, paracetamol to treat uh, the SLE, right? So, so in view of that, um, most of the um, anti-SLE medication, the immunosuppression will be in the category uh, uh, B, C, okay? So, so uh, in view of that, there's a group of experts from uh, uh, ULA. ULA is a European League against uh, rheumatism. On the scenes of uh, a group of uh, rheumatologists, ONG specialists, geneticists, and epidemiologists mm, from uh, European and US countries. So they sit down and go through all the papers. So these are the recommendations. So they say that NSAID, conventional NSAID, there's a low uh, increased rate of uh, congenital malformation and uh, can be used mm, during the first and uh, second trimester and should stop after 32 weeks. Mm to prevent a uh, premature closure of the ductus arteriosus. And 92% 90, 90 of them agree on this statement. And for the uh, COX-2, uh, selective COX-2 inhibitor, uh, current evidence is insufficient, so should be avoided. So all of them agree as well. Oral IV steroid, IA steroid can be used throughout the pregnancy. Hydroxychloroquine, chloroquine, and sulfasalazine can be used throughout the pregnancy. All of them agree on this statement. But uh, if you look at this, uh, the sulamide or arama, uh, which is uh, one of the DMARs sometimes we use to treat uh, arthritis in uh, SLE as well, uh, uh, because the current uh, evidence is insufficient, and they recommended that we must uh, wash out mm, these uh, drugs before. Uh, you get pregnant using the cholesterol or activated charcoal because the half life will be very very long. So all of them agree. Azathioprine can be used up to the dose of two milligram per kilo per day. MTX uh, evidence shows an uh, increased rate of uh, congenital malformation. So we need to stop uh, at least uh, one to three months before pregnancy. Cyclophosphamide, there are two statements. If a stable disease, we must avoid, then we must stop, uh, withdraw before uh, planned pregnancy. But in case uh, the patient has a life threatening condition, uh, cyclophosphamide might be um, considered uh, during the second and third trimester. And cyclosporine um, uh, is safe uh, during a pregnancy. Acrolimus also can be used. MMF, uh, there's an increased risk of. Um, uh, congenital malformation, so we need to take out uh, at least one, one and a half month uh, prior to pregnancy. Logistin immunoglobulin can be used. So in summary, the compatible drugs uh, are listed here. Non-compatible um, will be uh, selective COX-2, Arava, methotrexate, MMF, and cyclophosphamide. Okay, so go we'll come back to the case throughout the pregnancy, she remains well. If you can remember, her anti rule was positive, right? So we have uh, referred to our uh, ONG. So, so they have done a detailed scan which shows her normal. And her anti phospholipid antibodies were negative, so there's no additional uh, treatment required. So the, practice, uh, the medication now, she's on prednisone 2.5, hydroxychloroquine, azathioprine, and calcium carbonate. So are these uh, medications compatible? As uh, what I have mentioned just now? Yes, uh, of course, yes. Uh. But if you uh, uh, remember just now, she was on a uh, vitamin activated type vitamin D, right? The, the calcium carbonate. we have taken out because uh, up to now, we don't have any uh, evidence uh, whether this is a safe drug during pregnancy. Uh. So normally, we will take out the calcium or or during pregnancy. Right, so uh, finally she delivered a baby boy at the nine weeks on fire S V D and ran full uh, normal birth weight, no skin rash, healthy, discharge home. So now the question comes again. We we, we can't just uh, discharge our patient like this, right? Mm. So we need to tell educate her what is the risk of an SLE flag mm. during the postpartum period. And on top of that, she is on so many types of uh, immunosuppression. Mm -hmm. Can she breastfeed or not? Mm -hmm. Are the drugs compatible? And lastly, the contraception. So, 
uh, regarding the SLE risk of flare of uh, SLE postpartum, um, actually they are uh, the, 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 the 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 research currently actually say that um, one of them say that uh, higher risk uh, to get the SLE flare during a, a postpartum, but others have found that this activity actually uh, doesn't increase after the pregnancy. But in one of the uh, analysis uh, of seven prospective uh, comparative study, says that three actually uh, fans and four, four of them uh, did not uh, show the similar uh, uh, result. So in summary, postpartum, postpartum we know that uh, the body is going to reset to the original condition. So the physiological, the hormonal, the immunology will go back to the um, initial one. So I think. Uh, the risk of flare is still high postpartum and also uh, uh, as evidence here uh, about half of the, uh, the observational study actually shows the uh, postpartum flare the risk is high so therefore uh, uh, um, sorry this is one point to highlight uh, during the labor if those uh, who are taking a long term stay or right, we normally will uh, convert them to high hydrocarbon to cover for the physiological stress uh, of labor and uh, delivery and postpartum uh, when we uh, convert back to oral serum in fact we should double the dose uh. if let's say the sound the power patient 2.5 mg OD so we should actually uh, give her 5 mg for another 2 to 3 days more yeah. so and we should follow up them uh, uh, soon in 4 or 6 weeks uh, postpartum after the confinement Okay, so this is uh, a uh, medication uh, safe during the uh, breastfeeding. So the compatible and non-compatible, almost similar to the pregnancy, the sound. Just that I want to highlight here is the sedative cause to individual. The sound, this group is in the non-compatible right now, is here. Uh, but uh, please take note that uh, the cause to individual mm, uh, at, at the moment uh, only safe uh, for uh, sedative The rest, uh, we don't have any evidence yet. Alright, so uh, in case the breastfeeding mother who is taking a hydrosterone, hydrosterone means uh, when the breast is uh, more than 50 mg per day, uh, we should actually advise them to delay uh, the breastfeeding 4 hours after taking breast uh, Meaning if they take the uh, medicine at 8 am, then we shouldn't uh, breastfeed her baby up, up to 12 uh, noon. But of course, uh, the mother can actually uh, express the breast milk uh, prior to the uh, pregnancy one. And lastly, I think contraception, again, uh, you are an expert. Mm -hmm. You are more expert than me. But just that, um, to share my uh, view on the contraception uh, on the SLE patient. Yeah. So very method, we know that uh, is suitable uh, to be used. Uh, but the failure rate is very high. If uh, estrogen, the hormone, uh, increase risk of uh, thromboembolism. So those uh, with uh, APLS, moderate severe SLE, hypertension, obese, uh, smoking uh, patient, perhaps uh, they are not uh, so suitable to use this uh, method. Progesterone only, uh, either in the form of uh, Depo-Provera, uh, Subderma implant, the IOS, uh, these are uh, reliable uh, and also uh, reversible quite a good method and lastly the IOCD copper uh, containing coin highly effective but those who have uh, uh, anti phosphate syndrome on uh, anti coagulation on uh, the warfarin perhaps uh, may increase the risk of uh, menstrual bleeding so you, you might not uh, consider this uh, in the EPR station and lastly um, take home message uh, we know that uh, uh, pregnancy uh, in uh, SLE is, uh, remains a high risk situation and we understand that active disease at conception is always always uh, associated with a higher adverse uh, maternal and uh, fetal outcome therefore uh, pre-pregnancy assessment is very, very important and once they got pregnant the care uh, should be from a uh, multidisciplinary so maybe uh, we need more. We, we, we need to work very close uh, with the ONG and perhaps uh, more subspecialty if needed to uh, ensure better outcome. Right. With that, I thank you.